Today, we are going to be diving into proper skin tones, specifically black skin tones in DaVinci Resolve. We're gonna start with a little bit of black skin tone education to differ between the different types of black skin tones out there. And then we're gonna work on two examples, showing how the workflow will differ depending on our starting point. So without further ado, let's get right into it. But first, a word from our awesome sponsor, myself. The SBG Elite Colorist Color Grading Course is a live interactive color grading course designed to take you from A to Z in DaVinci Resolve. Gone are the days of pre-recorded one-size-fits-all content. You will meet with me live two days a week, online of course, and you will be able to interact with me through asking questions, taking over my computer screen with hands-on examples and hands-on instruction to tailor your learning experience completely to you as we go from A to Z in DaVinci Resolve. Check out the link in the description down below where you can hear from other students who have taken the course. And I can't wait to see you in class. So let's talk about skin tones in a more educational manner before we hop into DaVinci Resolve real quick. So stick with me because all of this is very important. When it comes to color grading any skin tone, we want to establish what our subject looks like in real life. That is going to really influence the way our workflow works as we start creating certain looks. For example, I will not color grade a teal and orange look the same for a dark skin subject with a cooler undertone that I would a skin tone like mine, which is a more light skin subject with a warmer undertone. The looks just won't work the same. And so we can approach these things differently. So for educational purposes today, let's talk about undertone. So the undertone of your skin can be thought of as the tint of your skin. Some people describe it as your own personal Instagram filter that's always there. And this can even change depending on how much sun you have or what season it is, so on and so forth. So there's two different types of undertones out there. There's warm undertones and there's cool undertones. Warm undertones are going to be that yellow, golden, warm hue that you'll see with skin tones. And our cooler undertones will be that red, that pink, or that blue hue that sometimes comes off with skin. Where these fall will influence where we start our color grading. You're really going to have to train your eye to figure out what exact hue it is. For example, if it's gold, if it's yellow, if it's red, pink, or blue. However, a little popular trick you can use is to look at your subject's veins on their wrist. It's not weird. As colorists, we should be working closely with our directors of photography, our lighting, and our talents to really understand what's going on in the color of our scene. Even important if you're doing this by yourself, if you're a one-man band. So if your veins appear green on your wrist, that means you have more of a golden or yellow undertone, where if they appear blue on your wrist, then you have a more red, pink, or blue undertone, hence the cool hues, right? So now that we understand this, we can look at this on a color theory chart, and that's really what's going to help us understand skin tones. When we look at this color theory chart that I use all the time in my course, we can see that these colors on this color wheel are broken down into warm and cool hues. And that's kind of how I'm going to be working in DaVinci Resolve, is thinking about, okay, where am I? What am I trying to do? And we'll see how this works as we get into our examples. But before I let you guys go into the workflow in a second, I want you guys to know that if you are having trouble conceptualizing all of this in your head, simply Google types of undertones and skin. Type in black skin tone undertones, read articles, look at the girls who are working with foundations. It's going to help you understand all of what I'm saying a lot better. Again, practice makes perfect. Let's go into Resolve. So now that we're in DaVinci Resolve, I'm gonna take you from A to Z in the first example, starting with the log correction, showing you how I'm gonna manipulate the tones of the skin first, like the actual luminance values and then go into the skin tone correction. And then in our second example, we're gonna go through just with the starting at the skin tones and we're gonna go ahead and create a look. To get started, we're gonna work in a DaVinci Resolve Color Manage workspace because I'm gonna be using the high dynamic range primary wheels, the HDR primary wheels. And in order to do that, we have to go into a bigger color space. So instead of using the DaVinci YRGB color space, we're gonna go color managed. And then in the Resolve Color Management preset, let's go ahead and select DaVinci Wide Gamut. And I'm going to put my output to Rec. 709 
depending on what you're exporting to is where you can change this, but for today, that's what we're going to be using. Now, after you click save, if you're shooting something like Blackmagic RAW, Canon RAW, etc., or any type of RAW, then your program should automatically bring you into Rec. 709. If you are not, then you will need to input the color space manually. You can do that by left-clicking on the clip and then going into input color space, and you can choose from the wide array here, and I'm pretty sure your camera is supported, but if it's not, go ahead and use a LUT, and my camera is not natively supported in Resolve, so I'm going to use a LUT to get started. We're gonna go ahead and close out the tabs, and now we're gonna start with just getting our skin tones to a nice point. So when I'm looking at this image here, the scene that we have, it's pretty high key, meaning that it's pretty bright all around. A lot of our exposure here is in the top realm when we're looking at our waveform here. We have some darker areas of our hair, so on and so forth that we can see here, but everything is pretty white except for these window uh, cutouts here. I don't even name is blanking on me. Anyway, so looking at where our highlights are, these HDR primary wheels, I think I like where my black point is. So let's just work here with the top three, which is going to be our lights, our highlights, and our specular highlights. So we're going to increase the value of this until it's looking pretty decent. Now you'll notice that the saturation does not stay. As I do this, you see it's taken out the saturation on our skin. That's because saturation's not linear, so we're gonna have to go back and add that in later. I'm not gonna go that high. I'm probably gonna bring it back down until we're looking nice, until she's popping a little bit more. Right about here. So let's take a look, what did that do for us? Here, here. We can go ahead and add in some saturation to bring some naturalness back to it. With my camera, it's generally around you know, 1.5. You'll have to play around to figure out what your camera is. And what we can do here is we can adjust the roll off of the lights and basically where they're starting. I'm not gonna really adjust the roll off. I'm gonna adjust what part of her skin tone is considered light here. And I'm actually just gonna bring it down so we get some of those darker areas and even her out. Now let's, let's see what that did first. Let's bring it maybe about right back here. I like that. Let's see what this did before, after. Now this is looking good already, but now we can go in and fine tune her skin tones. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add a second node and we're gonna dial in those skin tones. Now our talent here in particular has a yellow undertone and she's actually looking pretty magenta if you ask me. So let's qualify out our skin tones and see what they're doing first. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go into our qualifier. I'm gonna use a basic HSL because we don't have anything else that's gonna get caught in here. And then I'm just gonna fine tune this a little bit. I know she doesn't have any, much greens there. So let's just shrink this a little bit. See if we can just get her hands, her lips right about there. And then I'm gonna add in a little bit of low soft just to clean that up a bit. Right there is looking pretty decent, okay? That's a pretty good key. Now, just off the bat, if we look at the information on what's going on, let's go to a vector scope here. We can see she's pushing a redder color and she's not a red girl. Remember, that's a cool undertone. In real life, she is a warmer undertone, that yellow. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and get out of here and go back to our waveform and work with it. So I'm gonna use global here and we're gonna correct her skin tones. Now, the reason I didn't keep the highlight on is because it's just gonna get messed up anyway when I use global, I think it might, let's see. Yeah, it's gonna get messed up anyway. So I'm gonna turn that off and we're gonna make her, we're gonna neutralize that out. Now you might be like, well, that, that doesn't look good. You're right, it doesn't. And this is where we go in and add in that finesse, which is our shadows. I corrected the undertone of the skin first. And now the darker portions of her skin, I want to represent this, this blood flow. And you can see this, when we're working with the shadows, it's actually encompassing most of her face here. I believe like those bottom edges may be the dark edges that get encompassed there, but her entire face is in a shadow range. It's gonna affect this differently as we go through. So I can add in blue. You see it's affecting her whole face. Well, so I'm gonna add in red to represent that blood flow. Just a little bit of red right there. Now that is looking far more natural to what Nina is. Now what we can go ahead and do here 
is we're just gonna back off the saturation a little bit globally. Cause I don't need it that strong. We're gonna back off of it a little bit. Then I may even back off how much yellow I put into the skin to fine tune it. Before and after. It is that simple when we're approaching skin tones. All right guys, so in our next example here, I already have our HDR tools set up. We're just going to start from here and then go into the skin tones. So let's go ahead and add our node and try to key her out. But we run into a problem. Her skin tone matches far too much of what's going on in the scene. There's no way we're gonna get a clean key with this being 10-bit information. So what do we do? We're gonna use a little pro tip here called the magic mask feature. And I'm just gonna draw a line on her face under person and it's keyed her out. Now for the sake of time, I'm not going to let this play too long. I'm just gonna let this go bit by bit, little bit by little bit. And it's doing all the key information for me here. I'm gonna stop just so we can get a few frames and I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna turn off this highlight. So now that she's keyed out, we can go ahead and use a power window here on her skin, I already have it made, and turn on our highlight to look at what's going on in our vector scope. And if I zoom in on this so we can get a really good idea, we see she's pushing sharply to magenta, towards that cool red side. Now she does have a cool undertone, it's just not that aggressive. So in order to create a teal and orange look, it's gonna be a balancing act. And how we're going to balance this is by making her a little bit warmer and then messing with the key of our created look to neutralize her skin tones back to the cool state they belong. Because she won't look right if we make her warm. We could make her warm, I just don't feel like it would be as authentic. I'll show you what both look like, but let's first bring her back to neutral. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and use our regular primary wheels. And I'm gonna show you how we're gonna mix this. I'm using the regular primary wheels just because I guess if I leave this on, you'll be able to see what's happening here. So if I bring that offset back down to, towards the green side, right, we turn this off and we turn this off, we can see that we've neutralized what's going on in her skin. Now you may be like, well, Sydney, she looks green. Don't worry about that. We're gonna, we're gonna take that out later. But we just wanted that little tip right here to start touching that neutral line so at least we know that's where it's it's even, to say the least. Now we can come back into our HDR wheels and again, add that warmth in the shadows. Now she is predominantly a shadow. I'll let you know that right now. And you can see how we're really neutralizing out what has gone on in that skin. She's not pushing so sharply magenta now. She's more on her neutral, cool side that she had. Now she is warmer. I will say she definitely has a warmer undertone and I've given her a warmer undertone because we're gonna bring her back to neutral by playing with the keys of our look. I just increased that a little bit. So let's go ahead and set up another layer to create our look. We're gonna add our alpha output. And to get the foundation of the teal and orange look going, again, I always just add in those shadows, add in some very dark blue into those shadows then I'm gonna add in a lighter blue to the mid-tones and adjust the low range. I have a tutorial out on exactly how I do this, which is why I'm going quicker. Be sure to dive into some other content after this and you will see me do this look a lot. But now we have this teal look going on. It's very sloppy, but let's finesse these skin tones now. Going back to node two, we can go ahead and go to our key our node key tab. Let's just drop this down to about 0.7. Let's see how that looks. Do you see what's happening as I drop this down? We're keeping some authenticity in our skin. I'm gonna actually bring this back up because I want some of that warmth there. We've mixed in kind of what's going on with the skin with what's going on with this grade here. And I'm just actually gonna drop this down to 0.9 so that that's not as high too. But that's exactly how we do it. It's actually that straightforward. You can finesse these things as we've talked about them. We can finesse some of these, these techniques a little bit or some of our adjustments. We can maybe even finesse the amount of teal, so on and so forth, play with the highlights, but that's the basics to it. 
And so when we come back here and we go ahead and take a look at a power window around her, her face, we see that she is now neutral. So we finessed it. We made her a little bit warmer than she needed to be, and we just came back and corrected it by bringing down that key just a little bit. And that overall is a teal and orange look on that skin. Now, if we take this off, again, she looks just fine. Before, after. We neutralized her skin, brought back some nice warmth to it. Um, we could, in fact, maybe just find our way over here to the more magenta side. And I think that would be pretty pleasing too if we come back in and add that power window here. I feel like that may be pretty pleasing as well. She's still pretty neutral, but has that coolness going on, just not that sharp look. Once you have a basic understanding of the different types of undertones with respect to black skin tones, then your skin tone workflow becomes pretty straightforward. If you guys would like more in-depth color grading education, be sure to check out the link in the description down below to my DaVinci Resolve color grading course. Also, if you guys like this video, be sure to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and turn on those post notifications if you have not. Be sure to follow me on my social media. The links are in the description down below, as well as the YouTube fam. Their links are also in the description down below. If you guys are ever feeling uninspired, uncreative, or just want to give up on life, remember, every day, airplanes take off against the wind. Keep climbing, stay inspired, guys. And as always, stay fabulous. My name is Sydney, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.